All right, first up, we've got William from uh, Berlin, the Berlin, Germany. This is a uh, this is a pretty serious portfolio, actually. Like the the volume of the content is uh is is pretty good. So this is let's see here. Or volume, the quality. I mean, so nine months ago, <clears throat> you can die in peace now. Nice, Jess. That's dope. What's up, Reeds? How you doing? That is a huge fingerprint. Like a thumb, some thumb action. I guess it would, kind of would go there. It just looks large. Hmm. Anywho, looks, uh, just quick glancing at this one. Looks, looks all right. Is that is that normal for the shells to uh, rest like this, or it's a small gun? <laughs> Jordan, what's up, dude? And low, yo, how you doing? Twelve hours, huh? Nice. That's that's pretty quick. Freezy, dude. Four months as well. Thanks, man. Was that a gun for ants? <laughs> okay, so next up, we got a gun here. So right off the bat, I feel like um, this uh, this material, like the depth of this detail here and the depth here, it's strange that they're so offset from each other. Like the range is different. I guess maybe the, the reference could suggest more like that. Whoa, it's crazy seeing a silencer on like a on a pistol that has this type of material on it. Uh the other thing I would say is the um <laughs> that's kind of cool. The the material at the bottom here feels odd to me. Like I don't know what that is. Uh and then the the doff here is really strong. As far as like um so you have this harsh line here, right? And you're you're doffing it out. If you're going to do a, a doff like this, I would actually um, open Photoshop. Um, I would just do it in post. Yeah, the tasty detail is nice and up front, right? And then it's kind of getting blurred out. Give me a second here. <clears throat> yeah, I think right now what the weakest thing on these weapons are is um, the materials. <laughs> Doff. Hoff's lesser known brother. <laughs> That's good. So you could do like a uh, Gaussian blur. Or like if you pay for it, you can get a really nice Boca blur. And then just mask that. Because, like, what I've noticed is when you doff in 3D, you tend to get this, like, line here. Um, if we could, like, soften that out, the easiest way is to actually just do it yourself, right? I wonder if I can, hang on. That doff's a little strong. I think I can actually, maybe I can apply it as a, oh, as an effect, nope, huh, all right, well, let's, uh, let's do this again, do something like that. So you could do it manually, which will uh, give you a better transition. The other nice thing is then you can like control and remove it when you need to. Like if you want this stuff back there. 
See, you don't just make sure you don't lose the nice fine details that you got. Like, see, I already want to, I want to pull the doff back to here, but you've already, you've you've stopped me from having that ability. <laughs> Anywho, overall it looks looks pretty well done. I would just look at your materials. Uh, the normal information that's happening here seems, um, what is it? It seems inverted, maybe. The other thing too is the the text here has a strange edge to it. So like it kind of feels like it feels like it's either inverted or yeah. Well, so one thing is it feels possibly inverted, but I could be wrong because the highlights under here and the lights coming from up here. Um, what could be throwing me off is the bevel width on here makes it feel like they're from two different what's up try how you doing it makes it feel like they're from two different resolutions right so you're getting like a textile density issue just via the size of the bevels in the text versus the bevels here you know what i mean you get a little bit of it here too um i would be really careful about this type of that type of normal information. Let's see this stuff here. I'd be really careful of this stuff. Dude, this song's sick. Um, you probably like want to leave it to scratches like this one and then leave the rest to your roughness. But uh, if you want any tips on weapons and stuff, I actually suggest talking to Ricky. That guy's crazy with his guns. Let's uh, turn this up. Um, let's keep moving through here. So you, you're saying a 3D art is student. Right now I'm seeing, let me go back here real quick. I'm seeing environments. Looks like a lot of props like a diorama, uh, improvise an IED, improvise explosive device, the speeder, uh, high poly model and the low poly. I'd actually combine these two. Um, and then f f this is a nice use of the doff. Man, that looks sexy with that background color. Mm. So I feel like, um, if I could see the, let me see here, I'm going to go through this. Here, I'm going to link you guys this. Um, so there's some stuff that kind of is screaming that you're, you're new to texturing with maybe like Substance Painter. Um, so these, be careful with uh, these streaks here. This looks like um, this stuff here. Man, I'm, I need a different color. Um, maybe I can use that. Mm, how about green? Yeah. So these streaks here look like uh, sample counts are really low on like a dripping uh, mask that's being applied to uh, this, uh, the text that's on here. And then the text looks like you literally just drew on the uh, mesh. I would actually see if like, Go like full on, oh, whoops. When I say go full on, I mean just straight up. This sounds freaking crazy, but do uh, do some decals of your own instead of writing directly on the asset. Um, or like look up graffiti and see how people, how people write and, and how, the, how the paint runs. Cause like you could do stuff like uh, if you did that R right, doing an R with a bit of a style and then like adding that drip. Where where it would uh, like think about where paint builds up, like if they start here, and then they start here and then pull down, and then they end here. This is gonna have like a a tail, which I don't think I can do now that I've drawn it out. Uh, that'll have like a little bit of a tail and then where these start you get you tend to get drips 
And where those drips are is where you're going to actually get a lot of uh, um, thickness in the paint itself, whereas the rest is going to be pretty thin. Uh, man, I wonder how... Maybe we'll have to do a little thing on that. But, like, remember that it's spray. It sprays and then it, they, and then they go. And, like, based on how long they hold in the area, we'll, we'll change... And then where wherever you're finishing your the paint or wherever the the brush starts, make sure that you get a an, a run on there. <laughs> I've tagged someone's car before. That is a lie. <laughs> Lies. Uh, the other thing I would watch out for is. Hmm. This type of stuff. Be careful with um, having like really even edge, edge wear. Like break it up. So like right now you have an edge that's doing this. Do get stuff like that. Or maybe even it doesn't happen for a little while and then it comes back. I actually really want, I really want a uh, asset that I can just texture demo on. Maybe I'll get uh, that dresser from the challenge that's being made. Um, also remember to bake ambient occlusion because in ambient occlusion bakes, uh, depending on what this was rendered in, ambient occlusion will actually mask the, it should mask the uh, reflectiveness of roughness This this asset's pretty cool though. It just it it needs uh, another pass on on materials. Like try and think about like uh, how a material is put together, uh, what the material is, and then like how that material is applied to the surface. Like the paint, for example, is not all thick like this. Like this actually looks like you've you've cut out tin foil pieces of the text and then placed them on the surface. Hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense. Dustin, what's up, man? How you doing? Um, yeah, this looks like it's, it's just ready for what you've learned. Like, so this is four months ago. I assume your, your texturing skills have actually gone, gone up from, uh, four months ago. This looks like the perfect thing to, uh, practice some texturing on just cause it's got lots of stuff to try things out in. I'd like to see the albedo only of this and the roughness only, just just out of curiosity. Uh, let's see here. This looks pretty good. Uh, we got a little real time action going on here too. So yeah, your materials are already much better. So this looks really nice. Um, oh nice, some dynamite. You did some research. I can see it. So I, I guess uh, what I would say here is getting some more like, uh, I mean, I know that this is, this is gloss and reflectivity, but right now you can see everything is pretty mid ranged. Like this is darker. But getting some variety in there is going to be really good. So like where where you've got metals like this stuff here. That should be really uh was it really white? That's that's how gloss works, right? <laughs> it's like the whiter it is, the more reflective. Cuz like right now your ranges between everything is is pretty uh minimal. And like it'd be really really nice to see uh, some range in your gloss. Um, the first comment on it, though. <laughs> good. <laughs> I like. Good. 
Um, yeah, I think I think if you got some more range in your gloss, it would work wonders. And normally, I would say uh, don't add this type of darkening, but because uh, that's like that looks like more of ambient occlusion work like that's what the ambient occlusion would be doing but i think in the way that um marmoset renders materials it's probably probably better that way because then you're not getting the reflectivity happening all the way up in here hmm in general this is a pretty well done asset though i think just pushing the the uh, gloss is gonna do wonders for you Yeah. Anywho. Oh, this is cool too. All this little extra like details are like really nice. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Some props. Be careful with the, your darkness ranges and how clean materials get. Like put a lot more information in your roughness. It doesn't mean make it rough. It just means a lot of variety. You can keep it in the same range. Just have a lot of like variety in it. I guess it's gloss, right? Because you're showing it in Marmoset. So let's see what the... Because everything is about roughness or gloss. Yeah, and if you look at it, it's really like... Like uh, this plastic. Take a marker and just write some write some text on plastic that looks just like this. And then let it dry and then get like a glancing angle with a light across it and see what the actual like roughness or gloss difference is between these two values. Because that like paying attention to stuff like that is going to go a long way for like those subtle like. Uh, that subtle attention to detail that ends up making your work subconsciously look real. Let's see what this looks like, actually. Yeah, I always look glancing angle when you're looking at this type of stuff. The ground could be higher res, I guess. Uh, and the roughness of the blanket is actually, or gloss, I should say. That's pretty dirty, man. Um, see, in order for this to pop more, if you can make your your fabric darker, this will this will stick out more. Right now, I think it, it kind of gets lost. You get it at this angle. Yeah, maybe mm, maybe it's okay. Yeah, okay, nah. I don't know. This fabrics and, and soft materials like that they're can be pretty difficult just because like you almost need the shader support to like add a Fresnel color so that you can simulate the, the fuzziness. Let's see what else we got here. I think your white range is okay. There's some darks in here that are getting really dark. I'd be careful with that. And the resolution of your ground versus these, like this is this is textile density 101 stuff here where like the ground is really low res versus, uh, what's up John, how you doing? Uh, the textile density of the ground versus the plastic container here is like, this is much higher res than this. Marmoset has fuzzy support. Okay. Yeah. So getting like a fuzzy shader on this might, uh, might help. I haven't, I haven't used Marmoset, uh, very much since like it's early beginnings. It's gotten really expensive as well. So it's the approaching it is even harder than before. Oh, uh, but yeah, and then this is, I think this is good. 
this being dark in your so what's the uh gloss okay i think that's just the resolution is really low on stuff so like if if we were, if we were making this oh i like this attention to detail but i think like if you were making this uh for a game this would probably just be a tie level material and you're like well what do you do about this stuff and this stuff right or or this stuff down here uh you would do that you could do this type of stuff with a mask to just kind of change up the roughness and or the albedo color uh, well, the rest of it is a tileable material and then taking this is actual geometry that's tiling another material that's got all the properties of that type of material. Oh, this is awesome. See, it, it makes me wish that that tape had alpha so I could see that it's tape. The other thing too, is your materials are really, really dirty. I think that um, I think that dirtiness should be in this, in your gloss, way more than in your albedo. Like the range contrast of like the white to or this gray, this white gray to almost black. That range should be way narrower. Like it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that. Like uh, let me see if I can. I need to move my keyboard. I can't see it. There you go. So if we were to take, we'll just look at the ranges here and see. So I'd probably go more in that range for if you want to add that type of detail to your albedo. Because all of that work should actually be in your gloss or roughness. Yeah, I love how it's it's darker up here and then lighter down here. Like I would imagine it'd be even lighter here or darker here. Huh. That's a that's a nice attention to detail. See, and this is again as like missing some range where like I wish I could see the plastic of this or maybe you add the raindrops on here. <laughs> nice Reddington. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. Uh, and then this diorama thing that you've been working on is freaking crazy, dude. It's so big. Oh, the ground. Yeah, this ground turned out really nice. The breakup is really good. Because I remember you were talking about how, how you were going to break this space up. Don't be afraid to make this more than one piece. Like I noticed it's like tiling and stuff. But like chopping those up and then making some separate tile pieces would be pretty good. Uh, in this scene, I'd be curious to see. This is a really nice shot. This is really cool. Um, I'd be curious to see like the albedo only because I feel like there might be some stuff in there that's too dark, especially in the roof materials. Like your AO, I think looks really, really strong. Maybe it could be halved. So you're just getting a lot of extra noise for um, for not much payoff, I guess is what I'm saying. Especially here, like look at how much contrast is in the in the stone pattern. Like it's better to have that contrast be exposed through lighting and normals, and have the albedo just be there for color. And I feel like right now a lot of it is in the albedo, which is maybe maybe intentional because it's painted, you know, painted textures or, or the approach of going towards painted textures. Uh, even in that case, you want to stay clear of like too much contrast in your materials.
Yeah, this is cool seeing this breakdown stuff. Man, what a scene. That's awesome. Nice decals too. That's cool. Uh, breaking up the decal shapes, like right now you've got, let's see here. Right now you've got shapes going on that are like this. And thinking about ways you can utilize the same material on other things or with other things. So like if this is the top down of like a building, right? And this is the corner. And then maybe there's a fence here. Uh, and the building continues. Getting a decal of this hay stuff that you can put in here. One that can go like this. One that can go around the corner. Like this one could technically go around the corner because you can just push it into the wall. But like thinking about how to utilize this material more is, is really good. And then also like just kind of getting away from just making everything kind of square. Like doing stuff like this or like longer shapes. Especially with the leaf stuff. All the leaves. Is that it? Dude, this looks like a chocolate chip cookie. Because this is so even. Make it make it all irregular and stuff. This one's really cool too. It's just um this one's suffering from it less because you have the smaller one, so the, the gradation of it switching is less. But yeah. Like Let's see if I can, like if you were to make like a, like a shattered material after this, I think I'm going to have to, you have a breakdown too, which is pretty cool, but uh, we're going to have to move on to the next portfolio. I just want to make sure I get this. Let's do like this so like say you break break a window or something we're just gonna bevel some of these like that. so you have this shape right and we want to shatter it and you want to scatter it out um, you can do shift C in moto will like slice through but like when you when you drag that plane out so you can move it around and grab this point and shift these around. But like what you can do is in the properties of it, you can uh, split it, cap the splits, and then add like a, a gap. So you can see what's happening there. So and then if you hold down shift, you can repeat the action. So you could just do Let's do some stuff like that. And then you can go in and like delete some of them. The reason I'm talking about this is because you want to like, you want to space these out in a nice way. And fracture, fracture things and make sense of like, the reason I'm uh, I'm talking about this is because like you can space these out in a way where they're look at this extra geo in here. Um, it's thinking about the footprint of it. You don't want it to be like square, right? You want to have like one like way out here. Maybe you take these and you dupe it and you you shrink these down. Rotate it. Yeah, you got to make sure that your shapes are not so uh, easily recognizable when it comes to patterns, because then you can you could scatter this around, you know, it'd be pretty easy. Um, anywho, yeah, so your, uh, your portfolio is pretty solid. I think that right now where you're weakest is your, your materials. 
and like the definition that you're getting out of them as well as your text textile density lock those things down get those figured out and uh i think you're actually going to be in a pretty good my music's comfy <laughs> it's cozy man <laughs> Does the duck, does the duck float? It floats. Um, I think you're really, I mean, I think you're really close. Right now I'm just like, like this one shows really good materials. I think polishing that one up and then fixing your contrast range stuff and in, in your albedos in this. I would love to see some daytime shots of this. And I think you're in a good spot. Uh, anywho, cool. Let's get to the next portfolio. I will be right back. Degree co art. Thanks for the follow and high five. Lol. Thanks for the follow, dude. Be right back. <laughs> 